Hi, it's Alan from Crash Test Security. In this video, I will tell you more about what a denial of service attack is and how to prevent it. So let's get started. A denial of service occurs when a legitimate user is denied access to a network, system, device, or other resources that they are otherwise authorized to access. That can include their email, e banking account, public online services, etc. Denial of service can result from a cyber attack known as a denial of service attack whose explicit aim is to achieve this effect. A denial of service attack is the deliberate flooding of a machine or network with bogus traffic to overwhelm them and make their service unavailable. It can lead to the target server crashing or simply being unable to respond to legitimate requests. Denial of service attacks usually do not lead to system compromise, data loss, or theft. However, a DOS attack can cause a significant loss of time and resources to the targeted service since it can last anywhere between a few hours and several months. Unlike a distributed denial of service attack, also known as DDoS attack, a DOS attack is executed via a single machine. The mechanism of a DOS attack is pretty straightforward. It seeks to overwhelm the capacity of the attack target via traffic. The specific way of executing such an attack will depend on the vulnerability of the targeted system. For example, one way of doing this is by sending many requests with fabricated return addresses to a server. This makes it impossible for the server to verify their source. It can lead to a server simply exhausting its RAM or CPU capacity and crashing. A multitude of different DOS attacks exists. Depending on the attack vector, DOS attacks either seek to flood or crash a system. The three main types of DOS attacks are application layer, protocol or network layer, and volumetric attacks. Application layer attacks are intended to crash a specific application or service rather than a whole network. It is usually achieved by flooding the app with malicious HTTP requests and making it unable to respond further. Application layer attacks are measured in requests per second. Protocol or network layer attacks exploit weaknesses in network protocols and procedures by targeting infrastructure and network management tools. They seek to disrupt a whole network instead of a single application. These attacks are measured in packets per second or bits per second. Volumetric attacks are the most common type of DOS attack. It seeks to overwhelm a target's bandwidth capacity by flooding it with fake requests. It creates network congestion and makes it impossible for legitimate traffic to pass. The magnitude of these attacks is measured in bits per second. It may be difficult to spot a DOS attack, as interferences may initially appear non-malicious, you can use several criteria to determine if you are being attacked with a DOS. The three most common symptoms of an attack, according to the United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, include prolonged network performance, unavailability of a particular, or an inability to access any website. There are several examples of how a DOS can be executed depending on the target server vulnerability. Some have fallen out of use because their vulnerabilities have been removed whereas others persist and are being used. ACK scan, SYN scan, and FIN scan use similar approaches to check whether ports at the attack target are open and can be exploited. They are used to gather information as well as deny service. In a Smurf attack, the malicious party will target a network whose configuration allows packets to be sent to all devices on the network at once. That is accomplished by sending internet control message protocol packets to the IP broadcast address of the network whereby they reach all computers. An SYN flood, also known as a half-open attack, is a technique that exploits the transmission control protocol, IP three-way handshake. During a SYN flood, an attacker repeatedly sends connection requests to all ports on a server. Typically, a server then responds with synchronization acknowledged packets from every port that is currently open. If a port is closed, it will respond with a reset packet. Usually a client responds to the SYN CK packet with an acknowledged packet during the handshake. However, during an SYN flood, attackers use fake IP addresses to send the initial SYN packets. As a result, the server never gets a response to its SYN CK packets and its ports remain open and it cannot reset them. Before the connection attempt times out, further SYN packets are sent to these ports, prompting the server to keep them open and attempt to establish a connection. This is because ports are saturated with these requests, leading to a DOS. The teardrop attack exploits a vulnerability associated with older operating systems and TCP IP implementation. Afterward, fragments are reassembled. However, a TCP IP fragmentation reassembly bug can be found in many older systems. 
The bug consists of their inability to reassemble packets whose offset fields overlap. Attackers exploit this bug when launching a teardrop attack by sending packets with overlapping and oversized payloads, making it impossible for the receiving system to reassemble them and ultimately leading to its crash. The ARP attack is also known as an ARP spoofing attack. This technique involves sending address resolution protocol messages over a network to link the attacker's MAC address to the IP address of its target. When this is executed successfully, the traffic intended to lead to the target is instead received by the attacker, which leads to a denial of service. This type of attack can only be performed on local area networks that use ARS. The Fraggle attack, also known as a UDP flood, uses the same approach as the Smurf attack by exploiting a vulnerability associated with sending traffic to the IP broadcast address of the target. The main difference is that it uses user datagram protocol traffic to flood a router or server instead of ICMP. The effect is to spoof the IP address of the source of the request and then direct the traffic from the network back to the router, thereby flooding it. Both the Fraggle and the Smurf attack have largely been left behind as routers no longer forward packets sent to their broadcast address. The main difference between a DOS and a distributed denial of service attack is the number of systems or devices used. Typically, a DOS attack will have a single IP address as its source. In contrast, a synchronized DDoS attack will be launched from multiple addresses, making it significantly harder to fend off. In this way, DDoS has several advantages over a DOS attack, as a more significant number of machines are used to execute the attack. Also, attack sources are dispersed, sometimes even across the globe, making it difficult to detect, contain, and ultimately shut down the attack. It is challenging to establish the actual attacker due to the sheer volume of systems involved. One way of executing a DDoS is through what's known as a botnet. A botnet is a group of compromised devices connected to the internet and controlled by the attacker. Through command and control software, attackers can take over faulty or lacking security devices and use these to flood the target with requests. This means that the attacker does not need to own all the machines required to launch a DDoS but can take over vulnerable devices and use these. With the advent of the Internet of Things, DDoS attacks have become significantly more common and easier to launch because many IoT devices are exposed and easy to take over. In some cases, a botnet comprises hundreds of thousands of devices. Due to the effectiveness of these attacks, recent years have seen a proliferation of DOS and DDoS attacks and even DOS-DDOS as a service offered by hackers. Denial-of-service attacks cannot be entirely prevented, but there are ways in which you can prepare to reduce their effect. Proactive steps you can take include creating a DOS response plan that covers all the aspects of handling an attack, including communication, mitigation, and recovery. Another step is improving your network security and strengthening your overall security posture by installing antivirus and anti-malware software and setting up a firewall that monitors and manages incoming traffic. Also helpful is signing up for a DOS protection service that filters and redirects malicious traffic and can spot known attack signatures and considering introducing network segmentation to separate systems into separate subnets and avoid flooding the whole network. Further, assessing your security settings and practices and introducing necessary improvements are also crucial steps. Try Crashtest Security today to discover how it integrates into your development stack for efficient, automated vulnerability scanning. The trial is free. Also, subscribe to the Crashtest Security channel to get more information about the most significant web security threats, their prevention, and how to use the Crashtest Security Suite. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.